these, okay? The, the, the air, the fire, and the water signs. Okay, the air signs are, uh, of course, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. And those are very humanitarian signs as Aquarius. We say they're humanitarian, Aquarian sign. Um, Libra is very social peacemakers. And of course, the um, Gemini is the communicators, okay? They're very often teachers, or they have a, uh, some knowledge that's uh, very rudimentary to understanding. I have a Gemini moon, so it helps me a little bit, even though I'm a Sagittarian. Gives me a little bit more, uh, helps me communicate better. Okay, so so these are the, the, the air, the, f the water signs are the Cancer, Pisces, and Scorpio. They're emotional, sensitive, sexual, psyche, very sensitive signs, um, sometimes quick to cry. You know, the water signs can be that way. The emotions run deep, as they say, with the uh, water signs. Um, very often cancer doesn't cry because they just keep it all inside. Mm -hmm. Cancer signs, because that's what, the, what do we use the word, uh, um, well, what's the word I was thinking of with it? Anyway, they're, they're hard shell like a crab, they, they keep it all inside. Anyway, so let's go to the next one. Okay, we've got the four triplicities again, this is the other ones. This is the fire, the romantic, daring, inspirational. Uh, uh, they're, they're risk takers. I was listening to Barbara talking to your group here about how the fire sign Sagittarians like to gamble and they can be into religion and all that. What's she talking about me? I'm Sagittarian. I love to gamble. I was always a good gambler. I loved it. We go to Vegas. I was always considered, got comped everything. You know, I, I was a high roller. Not as big as some of them, but I was enough that uh, I was a small fish in a big pond and they treated me nice. But uh, you know, you, when I was listening to her talk about Sagittarius, I was just saying, stop talking about me, <laughs> you know? But that was me, that's the, the and we have another gambler in here. She's one of the top in the country. She used to, they, did, they banned her from the clubs because she, she knows how to count cards. She used to make her living that way. Ann, right there. <laughs> Raise your hand, Ann. <laughs> <laughs> she was one of the top. In fact, she's taught people how to make money at gambling. She used to teach them, used to teach them. She helped write books. She, she, helped, she used to write, help write books about it. They'd get, have other people's name on it, but she basically taught them what to write. She's an amazing woman, and she's an artist beyond amazing. Beyond amazing, I'm quite a lady. Okay, so Mercury, Moon, Venus, if I use it as a grand trine. Mercury and the Moon are subjective. Very important you understand this. This is in your workbook, by the way. Uh, the Moon is receptive. It's not projective. It's a receiving energy in your chart. So whatever is aspecting it is giving it something. And it's going to take on the color of the meanings of those planets that's coming into it. It picks up the energy of those things that are given to it. It's like your soul. It's pure receptivity, right? Whatever you say, it takes. It doesn't say, oh, she didn't mean that. She didn't mean to say I'm sick. It says, oh, okay, I'm sick. I'm tired. You know, it's a pain in the ass. All right, let me give him hemorrhoids. <laughs> you, see? you think that's a joke? That's the truth. The word is made what? Flesh. The early Christians knew this. They were the greatest psychologists on earth. Okay? But it's been made into an institution today. And sometimes you still get the truth from it, but very often you get distortions. So, so what do we got here? Mercury and the moon are subjective to very dependent upon the signs and aspects to get their meaning. Okay, so if you have moon to, to Mercury aspect, it's a good thinking under emotional pressure. Excellent memory, retentive mind, Mind, emotions are in agreement. Why? Because they're in good harmony together. That makes for good memory, okay? Mercury, moon, okay? Now, if you have that aspect, it's a good energy. It's a good aspect. What if they're squaring off to each other in the Mercury and the moon? It's conflict, isn't it? Probably a lot of conflict with the brother by Mercury. The moon's the mother. It's amazing how you can see brothers and sisters in a chart. But you can. Mercury, look to Mercury and look to the third house. Okay. Okay, so okay, let's go to Mercury to Venus. Mercury to Venus gives a, a pleasing countenance, or what did I say here? Pleasing conversation and refi uh, refinement of speech, a happy in mind, a knowledge of beauty and art. Why? Venus gives that, okay? Venus gives that ability to bring harmony and beauty to. Mercury, the thinking and the process. You usually will not see a person that has a Venus aspecting 
Mercury with a lot of foul language and vulgarity. You see Saturn, you got a conjunction of Venus and Mercury. And she's got a mind for beauty that's amazing. You should see her work. You see things she's created. Anyway, so what do, what do you have here is you have, you have uh, 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 a, a mind that seeks beauty. The, speak, the speech is Mercury. When you see Saturn afflictions to Mercury, very often you'll hear a lot of profanity. People can be very, very vulgar with Saturn and even Mars. I've got Mars afflicting my Mercury in my chart. I can be the most vulgar guy in the world if I get very angry. And it astounds my wife sometimes when I get like that. It's very rare, but when I do, you push the button, the right ones. You, it's, everybody's got a button. I got a button. And you know, you push that button. I don't care if there's 10 people and all my neighbors. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to swear and say what I got to say. You know? And my wife will say, I wish your students could see you now. <laughs> I'm going to record you. She said, she's actually said that. I'm going to record you. And you know what? You know, because I'm angry, I say, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Just go ahead and do it. <laughs> See if I fucking care, excuse me. You know, <laughs> because that's when I'm mad, I don't care what I, and I just, another thing happens, Mercury and Mars afflictions is I talk real fast when I get angry. You know, I, I speak real fast and I, I don't speak coherently and I can't even think clearly because my mind is so blurred by my Mars. I mean, but that's my chart and I know it. And like I said, I used to curse. I said, why I gotta have such a temper? Well, you know, what is it about me? My Mars squares my sun and my Mercury. My spirit, I can get angry. But I, as I grew older, I began to realize I went through nine years in some of the worst places on Earth. If I hadn't had the temper I had, people would have walked all over me. But they, they feared my temper because once I got angry, it didn't matter if they were 20 feet tall. You know? So it, it was my preservation. So what seems bad isn't always bad. I often tell people, you see a chart of a child and you say, oh, this guy has got... Mars doing this and Saturn and, you know, and uh, oh, he's going to be a terror. And maybe he will be. But if he grows up and overthrows a dictator, what do you say? Oh, he's a hero. What a great man he is, you know. It's how it's used, right? It's the energy it's used. Or he's, he's got this violent aspect with Saturn and Mars and it looks like, you know, and he grows up to be a top surgeon, cuts people up to save, save their lives. Or You see where I'm coming from? It's all the way the energy is used. It's not always bad. You don't know where it's going to go. You see where I'm coming from? So, anyway. Okay, so we're getting anywhere. So the moon harmonious to Venus gives romantic feelings. Harmonious feelings, often a loving mother and a peace through the maternal role, uh, emotional peace through the maternal role. That's Venus the moon. If somebody has Venus to the moon like that in a good aspect, is it, is it always a try? No, it might be a sextile. That's 60 degrees apart. It's a favorable aspect. That's why you want to know the difference between the good aspects and the bad. We call them good and bad, but who's to say what's good and bad in the ultimate end of it? But the point is that if you have these aspects, then you can begin to understand the nature of that person. And maybe they need to be a mother. Maybe they need to work in a school with young children. Maybe, you know, the Venus moon, it's where they get their, their, their joy in their life, okay? So that's what all that means. Now, let me see if I, okay. Okay, let's go to the next one. We got the earth signs, the practical, resourceful, ambitious. Well, you know, I'm the type of guy that needs an earth sign around me. It keeps me grounded. My wife's Taurus. That Taurian, you know, grounding and the fixity of her chart. She has both earth and she has fixity, planets and fixed signs. What does that give? Stability. You say what's stubborn. Well, sure, sure, she is stubborn. You know? But she's stubborn in a positive way. She, you know, I have to acknowledge that. I mean, you know? Anyway. She's my, I sometimes tease her, you know, she's my beneficial bitch. <laughs> benevolent. Benevolent bitch. She's, I, call her, I call her a benevolent bitch. Because, you know, she really only gets on my case when she's trying to get me to do something good. Like eat right or leave those sweets alone, you know. And I say, please, leave me alone. I don't want this. Just leave me